Welcome to the 2015 election debate for the candidates for City Council in Ward 6. Today we have both candidates here. We have Steve Foote and we have Jack Lally who are both running for an open seat uh, vacated by outgoing City Councilor Michelle Dubois who is now a state representative. Welcome gentlemen. Thanks Thank for being you. here. Thanks for having us. Um, we didn't do anything scientific or random. We just decided we're going to do the opening, uh, Steve Foote first, Jack Lally second, and then we'll reverse it for the close because there are only two of you. So, um, Steve, you have a minute to do an opening statement and uh, tell us about yourself or whatever you want to do for the opening. Okay. Uh, well, I'm Steve Foote, and I'm glad to be here today uh, to talk to the folks in Ward 6. I'm a 56-year resident of Ward 6. Uh, I live on Sully Road right around the corner from the Brookfield School. I attended all the Brockton public schools, Brookfield School, North Junior High, Brockton High School, Class of 74, Massasoit Community College, where I have an associate's degree, and Northeastern University, where I have a bachelor's degree in business management. Uh, my priorities for the ward is keeping Cary Hill Fire Station open and fully manned. Uh, I think that's vital because our, our area is uh, mostly residential housing. I also have plans to have our roads repaired. Also, I have a revitalization plan for the village. I hope we'll be able to get into all these issues as we go along. And I'm glad to be here today, and I'm glad that the people of Ward 6 are going to have a chance to hear both of us side by side. Thank you. Uh, Jack, next. Hi, my name is Jack Lally. I'm running for City Council in Ward 6. I believe that I'm the best candidate for the job. I'd like to, you know, prove that to you. I expect to do so over the period of this debate. My primary focuses are public safety and fiscal responsibility, but I will not shy away from going to get, to go to get anything that might improve the condition of the residents of Ward 6 and the city of Brockton. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, both under time. That's, that's good. Uh, if we do that, we'll have time for more questions. First off, I want to start with, uh, this time I'll reverse it and start with Jack Lally. I want you, Jack, to tell us what your unique qualifications are to be a city councilor in Ward 6. Well, I'm completely new to the game. I have no, no predispositions, no sides I'm aligned with. I'm not, I'm not you know, set in my ways. I'm viewing, I'm viewing all possibilities and everything as, you know, why not? Why can't we do this? What if we tried this? I, I feel I can come in and really, you know, shake things up. I want to see, I want to see real progress made and I believe that I've got the, uh, you know, the drive to do it. Okay, Steve? Uh, well, my unique, my unique qualification is my experience and my education. I have a bachelor's degree. My opponent is just starting college now. I already have a bachelor's degree from Northeastern University. We're dealing with a $487 million budget here, folks. This is not monopoly money. This is the real deal now. I mean, you know, maybe it was kind of cute, you know, throw a vote to the, to the young guy, uh, you know, in the, in the preliminary. But now we're down to the brass tacks and the real stuff. We need somebody with experience that has governmental experience that also has life experience. This is no knock on my opponent. He's a fine young man. I met him. He's got a, his dad's with him today. He's got a fine family. They're, they seem like nice people. But the fact of the matter is you need experienced uh, personnel here to make sure our tax money is watched over carefully and that nothing goes on down City Hall that we don't have a say in. Okay, next up, um, let's talk about um, Priorities. You both have been out hitting the streets, um, talking to talking to the candidate, talk not the candidates, the residents, your constituents, I should say. And uh, you must have a good idea at this point, having gone through the preliminary election and getting ready, gearing up for the general election, in terms of what uh, the priorities of the voters are or the constituents. I'm going to start with Steve and uh, tell us what you've heard out there and uh, how you might address uh, any one of those issues that you've heard about. Well, of course, uh, keeping the Cary Hill Fire Station open is one of the main things that the residents speak about. I, I think Jack and I are on the same page as far as that's concerned. Uh, one of the other things that people speak about a lot in our area is a, a very dangerous intersection that we have at Boundary Ave and uh, North Quincy Street and Chestnut Street in Abington. 
And uh, last week, uh, after speaking with town officials in Abington, an agreement has been reached between Brockton and Abington. This is part of, this is, this is why uh, my experience is very helpful, because I know these people through my service as vice chairman of the Plymouth County Charter Commission. We've reached an agreement with Abington to put a uh, traffic light there at that corner. I've spoken to both state representatives about the thing, and uh, if I get elected on November 3rd, I will make sure that that project gets shepherded through the process so the light goes in as fast as we possibly can get it there. Okay, um, same question for Jack. Uh, you've heard the voters and the residents of uh, Ward 6, uh, your possible future constituents. Uh, what are you hearing out there? Their priorities, your priorities? Yes, the, uh, the fire station on North Cary Street is a very, it's a very big deal. It would be an unacceptable loss. I'm hearing a lot about streets being paved, the necessity for that. I've learned recently that uh, I believe Tina Road is being, is being paved soon. Uh, also, at the same time, I was talking, I was talking to um, a city planner, Mr. May, who informed me that there is indeed a mini roundabout being set up and it's currently in you know approval stages for the Chestnut Street North Quincy boundary intersection and I've been given contact information for a man in the old colony planning council I intend to follow that through and see what I can do to help my right. quick rebuttal uh, sure as far as what Jack just said about the roundabout, that was in the original plan. That's not going to happen, according to the state reps that I talked to and my uh, friends on the Abington Board of Selectmen. That's not going to happen. The deal is in place. It's done. It's going to happen. And it's going to be a regular traffic light. Can I, uh... Sure. Yep. Well, according to Bob May, or, sorry, Rob May, whose job it is to plan city development and know what's going on, there will be a, a mini roundabout. Regardless, as long as it save li saves lives, I'll be okay with it. I just want to see something put in there that can help prevent the brutal accidents that we see there. So I guess if you want the uh, rotary, you vote for Jack. If you want the street light, the uh, traffic light, you vote for me. There well, we don't, we don't have any control over it, so regardless. Actually, we do have control over it. That's the, well, problem. It's, That's it's the problem with inexperience, Jack. You do have control over it. It's in the planning stages already. It's in the done deal stage already. Yes, it's been approved from what we can do. It's, it's done. It's okay. beyond planning. You, were, you, were, you came into this six months too late. Okay, I'm going to go to the next issue. Uh, since streets were brought up, um, do you agree with the current process of the way that street repair is done? There seems to be, um, I'm not sure what the setup is, okay? Um, streets... I, I know Sully Road, which is the street you're on, Steve, is being paved right now, and Jack mentioned another street in Ward 6. I'm not as familiar with Ward 6 because I live in one, but um, what would you do differently dealing with street repairs um, going forward? Uh, Steve first. Uh, well, to my knowledge, uh, the way it works is each councillor gets to submit three streets. It's kind of a gentleman's agreement, if you will, amongst this is what I think is happening. And then they decide between the uh, councillors who's going to get their streets paved. Usually each one gets three streets. That's, that's got to go. Uh, there was a couple of years ago, the council approved a $1 million uh, outlay, I believe it was, for a computer program that was going to rate the streets from worst to best, start paving, and over, seven, I believe it was a seven-year period, that the, the entire city would be repaved, and then they would start again. And so every seven years, theoretically, you would get a new street repavement. Uh, I understand why that might not be able to work, but I want to know what happened to the million dollars that was allotted for the system, and if we have the system. Okay, Jack? Well, I know that, they, that there are streets submitted. I'm not sure who decides upon what streets are paved, but I think the problem, I think the problem is more that we don't have the money to do more streets. I don't think it's, it's a problem with the system. If, it, if there is a problem with the system, if I, get to, if I get to the city council and there is a problem, then I'd go about trying to fix it. But I'd want to see you know, more money go to the streets instead so we can just get more streets done now with the system we have. Okay. 
Let me go into a big issue that's being discussed and debated right now at the City Council. Um, as we speak, uh, we're, we're close to November. We have one more October meeting and then a few uh, November meetings and then the end of the year. So it's, 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 it's winding down. Desal is a big thing. Um, the, the Aquaria people have been before the council. Um, they've been invited a, a ton of times. They haven't shown up a ton of times. And they most recently showed up and kind of got grilled uh, the other night. Um, I'm going to start with Jack. Um, your thoughts on supporting or opposing the price tag that Mayor Carpenter wants uh, to buy the desal plant? The current price tag is, is ludicrous. It's way too high. But I know, I know that the mayor is, I, I don't think that's the actual price he's willing to pay for the plant. I believe it's something he's, you know, that's the starting price. Then they go in, then they work it down. You know, it's going to take us this much money to repair this part of the plant. We have to do this to the plant. So they can talk the price down. Who knows, the price might still not be acceptable. And in that case, I have heard of um, a, re a really good idea from our current counselor, Michelle Dubois, who suggested that the, uh, we try and get the MWRA to purchase the plant, and then we just join the MWRA. You know, they take the big financial cost, and we still get the water from it. Okay, Steve. Uh, as far as the price goes, I'm not sure about that. Uh, I would have to see the entire proposal in totality to make a decision. Uh, but uh, I understand where the mayor's coming with it. He, if, if we finance that price over 20 years, it'll cost us about four and a half million a year. Right now, we're paying 6.1 million a year to buy the water or buy the water that we don't use. And so he's thinking we'll save a couple of million dollars a year. I understand the math of it, and I understand where he's coming from with it. I think the whole thing hinges on whether or not the power plant comes in. I think the reason Aquaria is stepping around the council so much is because of the fact that Aquaria knows if the power plant comes in, they can sell water to the power plant. That will, that will take care of their obligation to sell water. And that's the big elephant in the room when the council's talking to Aquaria that nobody wants to bring up. And that's the problem, as far as I can see. Okay, we're going to get to the power plant in a minute, but I just, I guess I want to ask you both a question, follow up to my question on the desal plant. Do you think we should buy it, yes or no, and give me a brief explanation? I'll go back to Jack first and then Steve. I think we should buy it if and only if there is, you know, it's an affordable price. If we can't balance that out over a period of years or we can't go right in and buy it, then we may need to find another way. Okay, Steve? I think if the power plant comes in, we're going to need the water and we might have to make a purchase of it. It might be prudent at that point. Again, without seeing the entire proposal, I don't know if the price is good or not. I can't tell without looking at the whole proposal. Okay, we're going to go, so power plant was, was brought up. Um, neither one of you made the card. No pictures on here for Jack Lally or Steve Foote. Uh, that's the Stop the Power postcard that went out in the mail. Um, they endorsed uh, three, two incumbent city councilors, two challengers, and a challenger to the mayor. N not, a, not a surprise in my opinion. Um, we've talked about this issue before in the previous debate. We've, you've both been on TV before. Um, where are both of you on this issue, and what are you hearing from the residents of Ward 6 when you're knocking on doors? Steve first. Uh, well, my position has been clear on this issue for the last seven years. I've always said the same thing. Uh, if I'm elected, I will bring a resolution before the council to put it on the next ballot. I think the voters are not a fan of ballot questions, but I think when there's a very divisive issue like this that nobody can seem to agree on, that's the time, such as the casino, that's the time it should go on the ballot. I believe it should go on the ballot. The people should vote on it. And I think if Stop the Power was so sure that, quote, unquote, everybody's against it, they would love to have it on the ballot. But they don't want, neither side seems to want to go with this ballot option. So, because none of the current councilors have ever proposed it. That would be, just seem to me to be the easiest way to take care of it. Let the people vote and then do what the people want to do. Okay, same question for Jack. Uh, your position on the power plant and uh, what you've heard out in the field. I've heard, I've heard more, more positive than negative about the plant. 
Uh, I, you know, looking at it, it's, you know, it's, na it's natural gas, it's clean burning energy, and it's, it's uh, the water coming from it would be from, you know, sewage, sewage water, the, a the affluent, which once it goes through treatment is, I've been told, so clean that you could drink it if, if you wanted to. I, I wouldn't want to. Um, so I, I believe that it would it would uh, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be too harmful. I think it would I think it would have a, a positive impact. They have plants just like it all over New England. There's a small there's a small version one a small version of one on the roof of uh, Dana Farber in Boston. If they're willing to put something like that on their roof, it can't be that bad. And I think regardless the 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 fight's up in the courts now, and I don't see city council getting a chance to fight it. Quick follow-up? Yes. So in summation, Jack is going to vote for the power plant. I'm going to let you vote, and I'll do what you want me to do as regards to the power plant. Can I, can I hear about that? Yes. Cool. Um, in, in, to, su to summarize the summary, neither of us, neither you, nor I, nor Steve, nor Mark, none of us are going to vote for the plant. It's in the courts now. It's going to be left up to the courts. What they decide is what we'll have to live with. Any follow-up, Steve? No. Nope. Okay. I know that's the question that everybody doesn't even like to talk about every election cycle. It's been going. I don't mind talking on. about it. My position's been the same for seven years. Okay. Um, let's go to something that's already been decided in one aspect, but isn't finalized. Okay. There was a ballot question for the casino. Um, it passed by a narrow margin, um, and we're not all sure where it's headed because uh, there's another casino proposal that's a federal proposal down in Taunton uh, for Native American casino and a whole different scenario, but everyone seems to affect the other. Um, Jack, your position on the casino and also what you've heard out uh, talking to constituents. The the casino the casino was a in a very even split, you know, in op in opposition or support, but I can tell you right now we're not we're not going to get the casino. If they wanted, if the Massachusetts State Gaming Commission wanted to give us the casino, we would have already received approval. They're really looking for somebody, anybody else to give the license to. They really don't want to give it to Brockton. You know, I can't tell you why in so many words or less. I only have a minute to respond. But I can, I can tell you that I'd bet that we don't get it. Okay, Steve? I'm in favor of the casino. Uh, my opponent is correct. It was an almost 50-50 split. However, in Ward 6, the casino passed by 250 votes. It passed by 60 to 40 percent. My residents in Ward 6 want the casino. I'm going to support the casino. Our late great Senator Tom Kennedy was a supporter of the casino, and I think he knows about a lot or knew a lot more about what was going on on the state level than we know down here. If he supported it, that's the way I'm going to go. My residents support it. That's the way I'm going to go. I'm for the casino. As far as whether the, what happens with the uh, Mashpee Wampanoag tribe, we have no control over it. I'm not going to worry about it. Okay, let's go on to uh, taxes and, and, and rates. Um, there's a proposal that's worked its way through the council dealing with the water rates. Uh, the water commission, um, you know, makes a recommendation. The city council uh, passes it or denies it or defers it, whatever. Um, I know you're both paying attention to all the issues that are happening at the city council right at the moment while you're running for office. Um, Steve, talk about the water rates and what you've heard from the rate payers, uh, you, potential constituents. Obviously, no one wants to pay any more money than we have to. We don't want to pay any in kind of an increase. But the fact is that we're talking about road repairs with almost everybody. I know Jack probably is too. And the fact is that they want to replace the pipes before they fix the roads, which we need to have an increase. The, proposed, the original proposed increase of 30% was on a, uh, 30 in one year was unacceptable. They have now gone to a 10, 10, 10, and then 2.5 over a four-year span. I'm not real thrilled with it, but I think it's a, a, an unfortunate necessity that we're going to have to live with. Okay, Jack? The only thing the city has really to raise revenue 
is taxes. The only other way we get money is from Massachusetts or the United States federal government. The more we can get from them, the less we have to bill you for anything. I want to see how much we can get from the national and state level and avoid, avoid raising rates and taxes as much as we can here. Although I do expect that we will have to continue to raise them. So follow up to that question, I'll, I'll, I'll ask Jack and then I'll re, kind of rephrase it for Steve. Um, do you agree with the way it's being defined right now where it's 10, 10, and if you were voting on this as a city council, if it hadn't come to a vote yet, how would you vote on raising water rates? I like, I like the, uh, you know, over a period of time drawn out the 10, 10, 10 and two and a half. Okay. Steve, do you think that was a good idea? Uh, definitely better than uh, having 30% in one year, absolutely correct. Uh, I'm not in favor of any increases, but sometimes it's an absolute necessity. I believe this time it is. Uh, but one thing about, uh, as my opponent just said, about getting state money, federal money, my experience as the chairman of the Democratic City Committee for over six years, I was able to meet and talk to a lot of people, a lot of state legislators, a lot of uh, state senators, meet them, talk to them, get to know them, state, federal representatives even, governors, lieutenant governors. I've talked to a lot of people and I know a lot of people. I can bring that kind of money back to the city of Brockton or help our representatives bring that kind of money back to the city of Brockton through my connections and my contacts, which in the business world we refer to as networking. Um, any follow-up to that, Jack? Do you, um, I gave him a few more seconds. I'm trying to keep it fair. Thank you. Uh, well, Monday, I met Senator Elizabeth Warren, gave her my business card. Tuesday, I met Governor Charlie Baker, gave him my business card. I've met Mike Brady. I've met Jeff Deal. I think we both know Michelle Dubois. I've met Claire Cronin. I've met people from all over. This is a very, it's been a very informative experience. And I also have these contacts. Part of this whole campaign has been networking. I've gone to every fundraiser I can. I've talked to every person I can. I believe, I believe I've built myself quite a web of, 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 uh, of business leaders and political leaders and people. I've established my own, my own little network. And I've also met and more importantly know all the people he just mentioned. Okay, let's go into, uh, we're still talking rates and uh, water rates and, and different things like that. Uh, there's been a talk on a debt exclusion or a two and a half overwrite, okay? Um, as a voter, if that goes forward from the city council in whichever form, a debt exclusion or override, what would you do about it as a voter? You get to vote on it before. You, 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 you're not a councilor yet, so it goes on the ballot you would be a counselor. The council has to put it on the ballot. Um, how would you react to that? Steve first. I'm against any kind, any kind of uh, Proposition 2.5 override. They have never passed in Brockton. It never will pass. It's fool's folly to even put it on the ballot. Uh, I just believe that it gives government, city council, whatever, in any form of government, uh, too much latitude with too much money and it just, it's, it's just a backdoor way of being able to raise taxes unilaterally I think it's up to us as councilors to find other ways to get that money and to allot that money without having a two and a half override. Plus, it will never pass anyway. Okay, Jack, same question about uh, debt exclusion or two and a half override, your position and uh, how you would handle it if you had to vote on it. Well, if you want to put it on the ballot, by all means, this is, what, this is why we have the ballots. If you get enough signatures for anything, absolutely put it on the ballot. I personally, as a citizen, would vote no. As a counselor, I would like to see us try and, try and find ways to increase revenue in the city and get more support from other areas before we try and increase the burden on our citizens. Okay, um, we've come to about a five minute mark, correct? Okay, and uh, I wanna ask you guys a completely different question that I haven't asked before um, about why, I, I talked about your unique qualifications earlier, but more importantly, 
what's the number one difference between the two of you? And uh, if we get close to time, I'll get you to wind it into the closing statement. So why don't I, why don't I start with um, Jack first? Can you repeat, can you repeat the question? Uh, basically, um, why Jack Lally over Steve Foote? Sell yourself, and uh, if I run out of time, we'll wrap it into the closing statement. Well, I believe I have the, the energy, the drive, and the determination to achieve what needs to be done in city council. I have a personality that will work with people. I will go in there, regardless of who's elected to the city council and who's put in the mayor's office in, that, in this election, and I will work with all of them. I have you know, no preconceived notions of anyone. I'm not, you know, on anybody's, I'm not on anybody's payroll or anything. I will just go in there, fight for what the city of Brockton and what the people of Ward 6 need. Okay, Steve? Obviously, the difference is our age and education and experience. I have a bachelor's degree already from Northeastern University in business management. My opponent is just starting school now. I have 56 years in the ward. My opponent's been there, what, 14, 15? 16. 16, excuse me. Uh, so that, that, that alone, life experience means a lot. There's no substitute for experience, folks. Uh, to, to, as far as working together with people, he says he will work together with people. I already have worked together with most of these people. I know these people, and I have worked with them, and I'm already doing stuff in the ward. I spoke before the zoning board of appeals about a solar array that the residents didn't want. We were successful in knocking that down. My opponent was there, but he did not speak. That's not what we need. We need to have uh, people that will stand up and speak. I've also fixed traffic lights in the neighborhood that has, during my door-to-door -door canvassing, people have told me about. I fixed that. I talked to my friends in Abington to revise the thing about the, uh, about the traffic light at Boundary Ave. I've also gone to school committee meetings to uh, check out what could we can do in the schools, and I'm being given the time, the time signal now. But basically, the difference is education, experience, longevity in the ward, just life experience in general, and uh, it's not the time to uh, take chances. Okay, you I got the bell. Something, Mark? Yes. Well, I, I just want to respond to the, you know, experience and, and, you know, working with people and things like that. I've seen the, uh, the videos on YouTube of the, of the Democratic City Committee when, uh, when there was that whole, whole to-do about people you know, getting kicked out, things like that. I saw, saw those videos. Those are, those are kind of funny. If you want to search that Democratic City Committee on YouTube. Steve, respond to that and then I get to do the closing statement. Well, unfortunately, uh, my uh, young opponent here uh, has never been in a position of having to run anything before, so when you're a, um, a chairman of something or something, people are bound to disagree with you. That happens, and there are disagreements, especially in political uh, situations. So, but in the end, we were able to take care of all that, and the Brockton City Committee re-elected me again after that uh, to uh, retain my position. So I couldn't have uh, made too many people unhappy, and we're, uh, the City Committee is now, under the fine leadership of Mark Lindy, is now thriving as it always has. Okay, we have uh, about 30 seconds for the... Closing. It, it went from a minute to 30 because that got thrown in at the end. So uh, Jack gets the first 30 seconds. Once again, my name is Jack Lally. Uh, previous leadership experience, uh, you know, consumes of co-captaining teams and being president of clubs and things that, you know, while minor compared to this, have all gone on swimmingly without any sort of uproar. Uh, I'm having a... Uh, a Meet Jack Lally night at Tin Ray's Cafe on Friday, October 23rd, 6 to 9 p.m. Any questions I didn't address, I would love to see you there. Thank you. Okay, Steve, 30 seconds. Over the past four months, I've been walking and knocking and talking to thousands of voters in our ward. I find most people to be pretty upbeat about the way things are going in the future of our neighborhood. I share that enthusiasm. However, to reach this goal, we need proven experienced leadership on the City Council to represent Ward 6. I am the candidate that has that proven experience and leadership. Uh, I will keep our fire station on Cary Hill open, I'll fix our streets, I'll maintain our schools, and I'll bring a solid economic plan to the village that we didn't get a chance to talk about to keep our property taxes under control. Uh, day to day things, business things that happen in the ward, you can call me, 
and I will be able to handle those for you. I ask you to vote for Steve Foote on November the 3rd. Thank you very much. Okay, and that's all the time we have for in the Ward 6 debate. Uh, we thought we could only do it in a half an hour, but uh, we would have been better off with an hour. Just most importantly, on November 3rd, go out and vote. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.